All right, so yesterday the Nomad Bridge was exploited for over $150 million. Um, it, it was one of the most chaotic, ridiculous situations that had ever broken out in the DeFi space because the ex exploit was so simple. It led to a lot of copycat exploiters, people trying to nickel and dime the bridge. Um, and then there was also a bunch of fake Twitter accounts that came out trying to get people to send the money to what was the fake nomad team's address um, and so the whole thing just blew up turned into this big old mess and again you're talking about 150 million dollars so definitely not chump change but i have a thread from sam cz's son that's going to break down the situation for us um, they are a researcher at Paradigm, so very reputable source here, and they do a really good job at summarizing it. Some of it is pretty code in depth, though, so I don't understand code in depth myself, um, but I'll cover it. I'll, I'll go read through it in this thread. For those of you who do understand, feel free to break it down uh, more in the comments section. Before we get into the thread, though, for those of you who don't understand how a cross chain bridge works, the way it works is that you deposit a token into the bridge on one end, that token is then locked and you are given a synthetic version of the token on the chain you are transferring to, okay? So the token that you transfer, which in this case was WBTC, you're not actually getting the same token on the other end. What's happening is, is the original WBTC you deposited is locked on one end of the bridge and you are receiving a synthetic version on the other side. Um, so in this case, the it, it involves the Moonbeam and Ethereum. Um, and so what this led to is, you know, what this leads to is a big pool of tokens on one end of the bridge. And in this case, the hacker found a way to get the bridge to send him a part of that big pool in the Ethereum side. Um, and it was really just a glitch in the matrix. Um, so, all right, getting into Sam CZ Sun's thread. Nomad just got drained for over $150 million in one of the most chaotic hacks that Web3 has ever seen. How exactly did this happen and what was the root cause? Allow me to take you behind the scenes. And then he posts a picture of this DeFi Llama chart. This is the TVL of the Nomad Bridge. So almost all of their TVL was drained in this, this bridge hack. It all started when Officer CIA shared Speakaways, uh, excuse me, Spreakaways tweet in the ETH security telegram channel. Although I had no idea what was going on at the time, the sheer volume of assets leaving the bridge was clearly a bad sign. Here's a screenshot. Um, Spree posts, Nomad Bridge getting rugged, looks very sus. There's a lot of transactions shown here of WBTC withdraws from the bridge. Just an FYI, he says. Checking it seems kind of sus, though. Bitlick behind it. Um, and so that was Sam CZ Sun replying. My first thought was that there was some misconfiguration from the token's decimals. After all, it seemed as though the bridge was running a send 0.01 BTC, get 100 WBTC back promotion. As you can see here, they are sending 0.01 and got 100. So they sent 0.01 from Moonbeam and received 100 WBTC um, on the Ethereum side of the transaction of the bridge. However, after some painful manual digging on the Moonbeam network, I confirmed that while Moonbeam transaction did bridge out 0.01 WBTC, somehow the Ethereum transaction bridged in 100 WBTC. Um, so you can see the transaction confirmations here. So they're sending out basically 233 bucks and receiving 2.3 million. That's a pretty good deal. Furthermore, the transaction to bridge in the WBTC didn't actually prove anything. It simply called process directly. Suffice to say, being able to process message without proving it first is extremely not good. This is where it gets into the heavy coding stuff. Um, again, don't really have a great understanding of this, so I'm just going to read through it. Here is the screenshot of the, of the, the process. At this point, there were two possibilities. Either the proof had been submitted separately in an earlier block, or there was something extremely wrong with the replica contract. However, there was absolutely no indication that anything had been proven recently. And uh, here's a screenshot from Etherscan. The left only... This left only one possibility. There was a fatal flaw within the replica contract, but how? A quick look suggests that the message submitted would belong to an acceptable route Otherwise, the check on line 185 would fail. Um, and here's a copy of the code. Fortunately, there's an easy way to sanity check these, this assumption. I knew that the root of the message, which had not been proven, would be 0x00 because messages, message hash, would be uninitialized. All I had to do was check 
whether the contract would accept this as a root. Oops. It turns out that during a routine upgrade, the Nomad team initialized the trust root to be 0x00. To be clear, using zero values as initialization values is a common practice. Unfortunately, in this case, it had a tiny side effect of auto-proving every message. So some more code copies here or screenshots. This is why the hack was so chaotic. You didn't need to know about Solidity or Merkle Trees or anything like that. All you had to do is find a transaction that worked, find and replace the other person's address with yours, then rebroadcast it. TLDR, a routine upgrade marked that zero hash has as a valid route, which had the effect of allowing messages to be spoofed on Nomad. Attacker abused this, copy-pasted transactions, and quickly drained the bridge in a frenzied free-for-all. Then Nas... Uh, nasweezy.eth so for those of you who don't know Nas is a CISO or is the CISO at A16Z also the founder of Rebels by Night um, he put out a tweet that stated we need a lot more reusable shared components on the software and operational side for DeFi to reduce the odds of catastrophic failures whenever these happen it means that we failed to define the right safe level of abstraction so I agree with this point of view here and what he's saying is is the core codes for a lot of these DeFi projects, ones that are similar to others, we, there should be sort of like a standard um, of proving code that we know works, that doesn't have any vulnerabilities in it, that the project is based on, and then it grows from that. Um, that's sort of how I interpreted what Nas was saying here. I believe that is what he's saying. And again, I think that this is very true. When you look at how many projects are very similar, so cross-chain bridges, there's a lot of cross-chain bridges. Um, and ultimately, they do the same thing, except they have their own spinoff of that. So rather than these projects starting from scratch and coding from scratch, maybe what should happen then is that there's, again, a base code that they use, gets the bridge functional, it's proven code, and then they can grow and take their own direction from there. This would help mitigate a lot of the risk of things like this happening if they were using code from proven bridges that um, have pretty rock-solid code. So... A very unfortunate situation, um, and you know, bridges themselves are a very vulnerable target because there is so much deposited and left locked on one end of the bridge. Um, you can exploit that, just like we see here. It's no different than a DeFi project with a high TVL. So, something like Uniswap is obviously a major target, just because it has a lot of deposited crypto in it. Um, it's you know, all of these projects are going to be massive targets for hackers. So making sure that they work properly and there isn't these types of vulnerabilities should be a one goal for these teams as i'm sure it was for nomad this is really just an unfortunate situation and uh, again i think i think nas hits it on the head here that again there needs to be we need to have sort of standard codes the core codes that can be reused with new projects to prevent situations like this so i hope you guys weren't affected in this nomad bridge ha bridge hack if you were my condolences to you, and I hope you guys get your money back. Um, it sounds like there was quite a bit of white hackers, so some of the money is going to be returned, um, knock on wood. So, uh, you know, a really unfortunate situation that unraveled here. Guys, if this is your first time to the channel, please like and subscribe. We put out lots of crypto content, just about everything crypto in the space. So would love to have you along for the journey, and I'll see you guys next time.